no rest for the weary. This is the part two of the three-part series that I have decided to do. This one I'm going to talk about uh, the whole Brock Lesnar, you know, being the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, it started off as a great idea because and it was bound to happen because Brock was coming off a huge momentous win defeating The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Of course, a lot of people are still not too happy about that because they think that they could, that, you know, Chris Jericho or Shawn Michaels could have done that. Some other people could have ended the streak. But that being said, he came off a huge win and you knew that, you know, going into SummerSlam, he was probably going to be the main force that, and he had a dominating performance. I mean, I was surprised how many suplexes he did, uh, 16, two F5s, and that was it. John Cena got like an attitude adjustment and he locked in the STF, and that was it. And then they went on to the Night of Champions. It was one of those things where, again, it seemed like a dominating performance, but then they did the whole Cena. He did four attitude adjustments before Seth Rollins came in. And then you go on to Pell in the Cell. Survivor Series, it just does not feel right. You know, Mick Foley had the idea of actually having the championship defended once a year. Kind of like how WrestleMania only happens once a year, how Christmas happens once a year. And the promo from Paul Heyman last night, he mentioned, you know, you don't see Santa Claus delivering gifts 365 days a year because it loses the value. The issue is that I would much rather see Brock Lesnar fight once a year than have the WWE World Heavyweight title defended once a year because that's the main title. That is the title that has represented and created so many great memories, so many great superstars. I could go through the list. Randy Macho Man Savage, The Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, John Cena, Triple H, Chris Jericho, uh, Daniel Bryan, CM Punk. The list just goes on and on and on. And it just basically feels like you're spitting in the face of the legacy by not having that title defended. And even if you're not going to have that, I... I think what's frustrating is that I honestly thought that they would try to push a lot of these younger guys and um, create more stars. And while while they've tried, it just still isn't the same because, yeah, they're competing to see who's the best. I remember uh, suggesting the idea at Hell in the Cell that maybe what they could have done is they could have had you know, the United States Championship or the Intercontinental title as the main event. Have that be, like, the main championship since, you know, Brock Lesnar's not going to show up. But even then, you know, it's only going to fill fill the void just a little bit. It's kind of like going through a state of depression where you're trying to find that one thing that fills the void that is so hard to fill up, and that is what the WWE World Heavyweight Championship is. It's one of those things where you can't really replace it unless you somehow have so much more star power, which unfortunately they don't because they're still focused on the John Cena's, on the Randy Orton's, on the Dave Batista's, on the Triple H's. They have such, so much incredible talent. They have guys, like I said, like Adrian Neville, like Sami Zayn, uh, Hideo Itami, uh, um, Finn Balor, uh, Corey, Corey Graves. They have so many of these guys who they really push in NXT. But why aren't they maybe doing something like that? I, mean, I was thinking that. What they could have done to help promote, you know, the next NXT deal, since they had, you know, the 
to have them on Raw to promote it, what they could have done is they could have had, you know, like an NXT Survivor Series elimination match. Because not only would you have the chance to boost the, you know, NXT roster, but you're also giving them that kind of exposure to where people are just like, okay, wow, these guys are actually pretty good. I should probably check out what NXT is like. Giving the network for free did not probably pay off as well because the only major thing that probably worked was that Sting made his debut at Survivor Series and really that that was about that was about it really but again going back to Brock Lesnar needs to come back I know that they only have him on certain days for certain contracts and that, that's fine but have him lose the title at the next event. Now, I'm not saying, you know, have John Cena win, win it. I think it would be better to maybe push the idea of having, you know, Roman Reigns win the title if he has, you know, the kind of star power that I know he has. He's got he's got the look. He's got the moves. His mic work is getting better. I will admit that after seeing that in Survivor Series, I'm thinking, wow, he's gotten so much better now. Maybe uh, the idea, maybe to have you know, have Brock lose the title to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, not WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, have Seth Rollins cash in, do and you know, have him win the title, then have Dean Ambrose win the you know, the Royal Rumble and set up for a huge triple threat match as the main event of WrestleMania. People would buy into that. They would want to see, you know, these th three great athletes who have definitely made a mark, made a statement ever since they came in at Survivor Series a couple years ago. They created moment after moment after moment. And even now, singles competitors, they're still creating great moments. I mean, you know, Seth Rollins as the, as the you know, kind of like the hand-picked child of the authority Dean Ambrose, the lunatic fringe, and Roman Reigns, the badass that people really wanted to really want to get behind. It's almost like, you know, having Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, The Rock, and Triple H all battling each other in a huge triple threat match. And we need that kind of, you know, main event. Because people can disagree with me or not, and please express your opinions. The main event of Hell in a Cell being Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose, I honestly thought was amazing. It was better than, you know, John Cena versus Randy Orton, 932, whatever. And it created a memory that will last for a lifetime. So what, I, what I'm trying to really get at is that we have the star power. Let's use, they have the star power, use it. Finally bring the great talent onto the main roster. I mean, you always talk about, you know, oh, you're signing Kenta, you're signing Kevin Steen, you're signing uh, these guys. Um, what's his name? I, I forgot. I think Finn Baylor was the, Finn Baylor, sorry, was the other guy. I mean, you have these guys who you signed from the independent scene. Bring them onto the main roster. Give them the opportunity to be what we know that they can be, and that is a star. So that's my rant for the second um, part. The third part will be coming in very, very soon. So thank you very much for watching. Part 3 on its way.